Now oh, the weekend is over. It's Monday again. <laughs> I hope y'all had a great weekend. And today, oh, we are talking about The Equalizer 3, the final installment of a trilogy starring the great Denzel Washington. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You don't want to miss this. <laughs> Previously on the Nerdy Ronin Network. Yes, yes. In in closing, I will leave you with a quote from Pompeii, 79 A.D. Ack! The floor is lava! Happy, happy Monday. How is everyone doing? Uh, I, I had a pretty, pretty fair weekend uh, until yesterday, and I started not feeling well. Now, basically, everybody in the house, all the kids and the nerdy wife have been sick recently, and it finally appears to be my turn. Imagine. But anyway, other than that, we had a great weekend, and I hope y'all's was just as good as ours. But we're back. We're back. The work week is back. It's Monday. And my plan was to review another family movie from the 80s that we watched last night. But here's what had happened, okay? <laughs> I picked the Dark Crystal for our Sunday movie time for the family. And the first 10 minutes is so boring and narration... And I don't know what's happening. And because I wasn't feeling good, I went to sleep. Sitting right there in the recliner, I fell right to sleep, leaving Nerdy Wife and Nerdy Samo to watch this movie that made no sense by all by their interpretation of it. And because I'd never seen it, I was going to watch it for the first time last night. And I slept through 85% of it. And what I did see, I didn't know what was going on. But I'll have to say, the parts I saw, the beginning especially, was horribly boring. So I'm going to have to watch that again, so that I can talk about it with, you know, with some sort of understanding. <laughs> so my apologies. So after that, and after I had taken my nice little nap, I just started The Equalizer 3 and was like, I'll just watch this. So, I watched that because I'm a huge fan of the first two. Denzel Washington does a great job in the first two Equalizer movies. And I knew that the third one was the end. It's the last of the trilogy. So, we'll get to that in a minute. Hey, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Sorry that took a few... That intro took a few minutes, didn't it? My apologies. <laughs> <laughs> like and subscribe if you haven't already. And be sure you hit that notification bell so you always know when we're here. Which should always be Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at some point throughout the day. Alright, uh, in the description down below are all our links. If they're not there, the nerdyronin.com is the place to be. There's also a, a couple of discount codes down there for you wonderful people. Save you some pretty good money one on coffee and one on like shirts and hats and whatnot not of mine but shield well you'll you'll see just go down there and look. <laughs> all right let's get into this shall we <laughs> my brain is not working i'm not feeling very well but we're gonna get through this y'all we're gonna do it all right equal after three 2023 rated r hour and 49 minutes <clears throat> Robert McCall finds himself at home in southern Italy, but he discovers his friends are under the control of local crime bosses. As events turn deadly, McCall knows what he has to do, become his friend's protector by taking on the Mafia. Yeah, I guess. Uh, directed by Antoine Fuqua again. Uh, starring Denzel Washington, Dakota Fanning, who plays a spoiled, snooty person. Now, look, uh, anybody had, that had seen the other movies, <clears throat> or at least I saw this right away, I knew exactly who Dakota Fanning's character was. I knew that she was related to his dear friends and are no longer alive. But I did not expect 
for her to be so, oh, I'm the greatest it's ever been since sliced bread, talking to somebody who, as soon as she researched him, she would have known that he was a ghost and she would have been able to know that he's he knows what he's doing. And she was still running at the mouth about how much better she was and, you know, this, that, and the other. She wouldn't take a hint. Just seemed silly, that part did. And I gotta tell you, as much as I love these movies, this one was the weakest for me. Because, I mean, there was, right off the bat in the beginning, you're kind of left going, huh? Because it just kind of starts in the middle of something. All right? And something happens to Denzel Washington's character at the beginning. And I don't know if he's playing it that way throughout the rest of the movie. But this man hobbles around like he's an 80-year-old man. Like, 80-year-old man who's just, like, can't hardly get around. Even after he's healed up, he's just kind of like, eh. He's hobbling and... <clears throat> Excuse me. Maybe that's just me, but that's the way it came across. And I don't know if they were just ready to be done with these. But this... Or maybe it's the Queen Latifah series, the TV series, where they uh, gender-swapped the character and... Maybe they decided this is a lost cause because the first two were great and this is a good movie. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. It's a fine ending for a trilogy. But this one seemed like they had possibly just given up a little bit. Like when it was over, I was surprised it was over so quickly. And there wasn't much substance i understood what it was i understood what it was aiming for but it wasn't written well enough to pull that off and i can say this firmly and truthfully after watching so much indian cinema lately it's blatantly obvious when an american director and writer or one of the other is just phoning it in Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, it was perfectly fine for what it was. It was very watchable, but it just wasn't up to the standard that they set in the first one or even the second one for me. This one was just a man ready to be done. A man ready to be retired and left alone. That's kind of the way it came across. And that's fine. But he passed the baton to Snooty McSnooty Pants Girl? Whatever. I don't know. That's just my thoughts. Look, as I said, it's not a bad movie. It's perfectly fine. It finishes out the trilogy and it was very watchable. But it's not to the standard of the equalizer especially from the first two movies in my opinion it feels like they were ready to be finished that's what it felt like watching this movie and since this was the last one with him as the equalizer i guess maybe that's fair maybe he was worn out maybe they all were maybe they were just tired of doing this job in this series i mean and wanted to go on to something else I don't know. You never can tell in Hollyweird, can you? All right, you guys. Hey, look. Uh, I do, I am not promising that I'm going to watch The Dark Crystal soon, but at some point I will watch it, actually watch it, and we'll talk about it. Uh, <laughs> I felt bad <laughs> not making it through that movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm not, I'm, I've got to get out of here. This this was the one thing on my list to do today. <laughs> and I don't know if this is, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not feeling great. Anyway, all right. Hey, thanks as always for being here. Old subscribers, new subscribers alike, we're always happy to have you. And you know, if you're feeling down and blue, you know the numbers are at the end of this video. At, at the end of every every single video or the numbers, to reach out to somebody. Don't suffer silently, my friends. 
there's always someone to help. All right. And we'll be back on hump day. Hopefully feeling much better. <laughs> All right. You guys have a great like start to your work week. And we'll see you then. From Michael, the microphone, Bob, squeaky chair in the back, and this big fat nerd. We'll see you Wednesday. Oh, 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 oh